products, new products, new products, new, 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 new products. What's okay. going on this week? All right, let's kick it off with the new products. First up, we have a revision to the tricolor 2.9 inch e-ink um, feather wings. So you can plug any feather, including our new ESP32 S2 feathers, they're tested, onto the back of um, this feather wing. Um, the update is, you know, basically every e-ink display has been updated to use a different chipset. So it's the same resolution, same red, black, and white pixels. Um, but instead of, I think, the ILI-0373 chipset, it now has the SSD-1675. I've noticed that pretty much everything is moving to the SSD-1675 and 1680 chipset uh, with e-ink. But, you know, thankfully, we've got driver code for it. So if you have an older project, you'll just need to select the different driver. Um, our library, like, you just tell it it's a different number. But uh, other than that, the, the code and functionality is the same. Okay, next up. This is Electrify. It's an Optimus playbook for our clean energy future. It's by Saul Griffith. We've known Saul forever. You were at MIT. I, I went think. to school with him. That's right. And uh, I'm going to play a three-minute interview with him. And this is from another website. Um, I'm sure it's OK. It's his interview. And uh, we're going to be stuck in this book. We'll probably do uh, some interviews with Saul and more. And basically, you know, I know we're all trying to do a good job with saving the planet, um, but, you know, not having a uh, plastic straw is probably not going to solve it. There's um, some really big challenges ahead. And it's probably going to be solved with people like you out there and people who are building things and engineers. And um, I don't think anyone who's reasonable thinks that we should just like be in a cave in a burlap sack. We probably have to build some solutions and we probably have to work together. And so um, out of all the climate crisis things, I really like the idea of an optimistic view of something we can do with a big timeline um, and realistic things that you can do that have an impact as opposed to just like shaming everyone for you didn't bring the tote bag today. Which doesn't work long term anyways, because then people are like, what's the point? You know, and if nothing I do makes a difference. Yeah. Um, so I do think it's, it's a smart, it's an engineer's view. It's a rationalist view. Um, and he, you know, he backs it up with the math. I, one, one thing I, I really do like about Saul is he, you know, he's not just making shit up. Like he's not pulling stuff out and just like yeah. reading random articles. He actually goes and reads the data, does the analysis and says, no, this is really what's, what's going to work for us. Um, not just uh, pipe dreams. Yeah. Like we decided a long time ago, let's not take planes. Uh, no one ate it for drives in. Um, you know, our carbon footprint is, is probably as low as you can get. We live in a big city. Um, we don't take, uh, we don't go to, we don't go on planes. Um, and for like a founder, not, not having a car, we don't, we don't ever have to car. No. We're, we're almost basically never in cars. We walk everywhere yeah. and we, uh, don't take planes and, and that, that helps a and lot. And one of it. the impacts that we have is like, nor normally a founder of a company like you is constantly flying and you don't, a boat. you don't. don't and boat. so, um, anyways, uh, here's an interview with Saul. It's three minutes, but I think it's worth it. Take a look at it. Sadly, people have the impression that we can't fix climate and still have the American dream. That's not true. The reality is we only need half as much energy as we think. and We don't have to shrink our cars, we don't have to shrink our homes to achieve that. Right now you think that sounds too good to be true, but here's how you make it true. We need to electrify nearly everything. In 2018, I worked with the Department of Energy to map the entire US energy system, where energy comes from and where it goes. Everything from how much energy your toaster uses to how much energy it takes to make steel. It is really amazing just how much energy is wasted. The wasted energy we're talking about isn't really the wasted energy of forgetting to turn your kitchen light off. It's in the way we make and produce energy more than 60% of the fuels that we use to generate our electricity get wasted as heat. More than 80% of the energy we stick into our cars in the form of gasoline or diesel is also wasted. If we electrify everything, we eliminate a huge amount of the waste, we don't need to shrink our cars, we don't need to turn the thermostat down, and we use less than half of the energy we currently do. We've got to electrify our trucks and our cars, we've got to electrify our homes, our furnaces, our hot water heaters, even the way we cook. 
and then we need to supply that electricity with our clean, non-wasteful sources, with wind, with solar, with hydro, and with other clean energy systems. And if we did that, we're going to save every business and every home money. Wind and solar are the cheapest forms of electricity going onto the grid today. Solar on your roof can be the cheapest energy source that we have ever had. If we use all of this cheap energy, there's an opportunity here for us all to save money while improving our energy systems. Think about that for a second. The future can be awesome. We can have cleaner water, we can have cleaner air, we can have cleaner skies and a better environment. And we can save thousands of dollars per year in every household. Why do I know America can do this? It's because America uniquely in the world has a history of taking on audacious projects, solving the Great Depression, fighting World War II and winning it for the Allies, launching man into outer space. If America goes bold and big in that manner, and we do it focused on electrification of the economy, we can be the first country in the world to truly address climate change at scale and on the time frame we need. America is blessed with incredible resources and can easily run on clean and renewable electricity. America can be electric. Our future can be electric. Let's rewire America. All right, so more ahead. That book will be in stock soon. Next up, this is one of the products that I've actually wanted to make many years ago and I just couldn't get the support and I'm so glad to see it. It's Brownages. So Band-Aids, they say skin colored Band-Aids, but not everyone has skin that's the same color as a Band-Aid, but with Brownages, you can. And so um, we have these at Adafruit, we stock them, we love them. And I was thinking, you know what, every maker accidentally cuts himself and has a little I, I injury. I burned myself, actually. I have and a not everyone um, has the same skin tone. And so this is a pretty obvious, amazing thing. It's by a couple. It's a small business. We're so happy to support them. And we now, uh, or we will have them in the Adafruit store. So you want to show these on the overhead? Yeah. Okay, this is the packaging. So um, I think these, I, I'm, I'm not that good with tones, and I believe these are the, the four yeah, tones. Yeah, this is the assorted pack, so you can see. And then the way to really look at this is um, because of, you know, here's, here's our team yeah. here. And I'll say that the, the, the tones, the, this camera may not be good at replicating um, the tones, but there's, um, there's four tones. Yeah, here Are you, you go. saying some digital cameras might not be tuned to all the variety of skin tones? No, these two look the same, but in, in person they're not. Um, so uh, you get four different uh, tone uh, colors, 20 bandages, I think so five of each. Yeah. Um, all the same size. And so um, I think, what, you know, we stock these because, like you can see, I, I cut myself. Oh, no, I burned myself on the soldering iron. But um, if you're going to uh, wear a bandage and you maybe you, you want, don't want it to be visible um, as much, you can pick one to your skin tone. So it's kind of handy. Yep. I like it. Next up, Lady Ada. Okay, we got some more um, NeoPixels coming your way. Uh, people really like the NeoPixel dots, and they also really like, um, which, which have kind of like a weatherproof uh, casing and wiring. And then people really like um, the kind of the fairy light versions of the NeoPixels. And this one is, it's kind of in the middle. I know people like people are like you guys have so many NeoPixels constantly, but this is different. So maybe on the overhead I can show um, what this is going on here. So um, this has a little uh, mini NeoPixel here, and these wires, you can see they're coated with PVC, so they are not um, bare wire, so they have a little bit more uh, weatherproofness resistance. Now, they're not rated for, like, dunking underwater, but um, this is epoxied, and this is PVC coated. Uh, so these are much more um, durable than, um, you know, what I would say most uh, NeoPixel strands are like, and they're much smaller than the dots. So they've got a nice small look, and as you saw, like they glow uh, quite nicely through the, this kind of milky um, epoxy. Um, and you just treat them just like everyday NeoPixels, uh, you know, have it wired up to this uh, metro, and then, hold on, I can get my power supply. Oh yeah, all right, I'm gonna show this while we uh, plug things in over here. It's USB-C. Yeah, you got one. There's the micro Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's uh, do this. Boop. Mm, it's not working. Oh, well. Uh, um, but live demo. So check out the animated video instead. I'm just going to stick with this. Okay, next okay. up, we got a bunch of these. Okay, so um, Espresso has sent us 
uh, three different dev boards, and they all look pretty much identical. So I'm yeah, going to explain okay. the difference. That looks like that. They all have basically the same that. shape and size. They uh, let's go just look at um, this maybe one. go to two more picks. This one, yeah. Um, they basically have an ESP32 S3 module on the left of the PCB antenna. The S3 is the next generation after the S2. Um, the S3 has native USB. That's why you see two USB ports on the right. One is a USB to UART converter for like the debug port, um, and then one is the native USB. Um, that, you know, if you're loading CircuitPython on it or Arduino, that's what will show up as, you know, like mass storage or if you want it to act like a keyboard or mouse or MIDI device. Um, there's a NeoPixel in the middle. There's a power supply. There's a USB to, uh, UART converter kind of middle right. And then there's the boot reset button. I like this dev board because it's exactly what you want and no more. Um, so the S3 is a very new chip right now, you know, as of this video, it's only supported by the um, Espressif IDF. It's not yet supported by Arduino, although I, I do see that they're doing commits. It's coming. Um, so hopefully, you know, if this is two months after this video is out, um, it should uh, have Arduino support. I'm, it's, it's not hard. It's just that there's a lot going on with the Arduino core, and I know they're, they're working hard on it. Um, MicroPython also, I think, has some preliminary support for the S3, and of course, CircuitPython. We're also working on the S3 as well. And having these dev boards out there is going to really help, because um, before then, you know, you only could get raw chip samples, and then people were like, "I don't want to solder them." So um, there's three versions. There's a version with the Warum module, as shown here. Okay. There's a version with the Mini module, okay. as shown here. And there's one with the Warum module that also has two megabytes of PS RAM. All of okay. them have eight megabytes of flash. Right. Um, they all look pretty much the same. You know, it, it, the Mini and the Warum, I'll be honest, I don't really know the difference between them other than maybe there's some thermal consequences or maybe the antenna is slightly different sized, but um, those are fairly much the same. The one with two megabytes of PS RAM, you know, if you're using, um, you need a lot of RAM. If you're using MicroPython or CircuitPython, I would definitely recommend going with the PS RAM version because that two megabytes really helps when you want to load a lot of code or you want to grab uh, you know, a big JSON file from the internet and parse it. Um, the S3 uh, has Bluetooth low energy support as well as Wi-Fi um, compared to the S2, which only has Wi-Fi. Note that it doesn't have Bluetooth classic support. Um, the ESP32, non-S2, non-S3 had classic. They've dropped classic support. So it's only Bluetooth and low energy and Wi-Fi. There is some neural net acceleration um, and there is two cores for the Tensilica um, 240 megahertz processor. So it's kind of a bump up from the S2, which is nice. I think the two cores are gonna be really helpful. You know, one core does Wi-Fi and then the other core can do computation. And I think of course the BLE is awesome. Um, it's always great to have a chip that can do Wi-Fi and BLE because it means you can do both, you know, LAN and WAN type stuff. So I can show. You want to show it off on the overhead? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I decapped um, wow. this chip, which I thought could be fun. Sorry, I did not decap it. Right. Dano decapped it. Thank you, Dano. That's cool. Um, so you can see um, this one, you know, it has the flash built into it, and this one has the flash separately. Um, or it's the PS RAM. I don't, can't quite tell from this photo. But then um, also I think what is really nice about this dev board, thank you, thank you, thank you, it now has two USB ports. The previous minimal dev boards only had one and it was like you had to wire up USB. But I, I like that it's two because you can connect one to your USB to serial converter for uploading code from one port and then the USB separate. So you don't, you're not, sometimes computers don't like it when the USB port disappears, comes back, doesn't enumerate, blah, blah, blah. So this kind of keeps it, uh, keeps it separated. And of course, you can always have debug data coming out um, the UART while you're writing your code because um, you can't connect JTAG to it, but um, the UART is still kind of the, the premier way of, of doing and debugging and In analysis. the chat, two core ESP, just in time for the start of async age and circuit Python. That might, it might be a, a good time. I'll say yes. that async will, the, the way we're gonna handle two cores in circuit Python is not, is not necessarily gonna be with async, <laughs> but we're right. gonna do it in the right way. Um, but that said, other other Arduino, of course, will okay. let you have access to both cores. And tonight, the start of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our okay. customers, our community, everyone here tonight. Anybody else? Everyone who's uh, interested in building a better future together. 
It's the new slider. Thank you. Um, we're adding, we're back. So we designed all these boards with the SAMD09. Can't get SAMD09. We designed them for the AT Tiny 807, 817. Hopefully we'll be able to get plenty of those chips. Um, so this is a I squared C to slide potentiometer plus four NeoPixels board. And uh, we also already had the rotary encoder to I squared C. And so this is kind of like a, a plug and play a slide potentiometer that's kind of ready to go. It's panel mount friendly. Um, it's got chainable uh, STEM QT connectors. There's uh, four address jumpers that you can cut. You don't even have to solder them. You cut them to set them, which I kind of thought would be a nice user improvement. And of course, there's four NeoPixels underneath. Um, if you have a mic controller that has, uh, you know, analog inputs, it might, maybe it's easier and cheaper for you to wire it up. But um, with these, you're going to get, it's already mounted on a board, ready to go. Um, it's plug and play. We have Python code and circuit Python code and Arduino code. And of course, if you're, we want to use this with, um, you know, our, uh, uh, you know, USB to STEM IQT adapter. Uh, it's a great way to add a slide potentiometer to your computer. Or for Raspberry Pi, which doesn't have analog inputs, um, but does have I squared C, you can plug this in there. So I've got a quick um, demo showing from the top, and I've got this plugged into a STEM IQT. Um, and then there's a little microcontroller on the back, you know, it takes I squared C commands, converts them to NeoPixels, and can read um, the analog input. So um, this demo just changes the uh, potentiometer value to the NeoPixels. So you get kind of a cool backlit effect. I'll say that because the, the you know, if you're going th with the through lit effect on the NeoPixels, um, because the PCB is orange, uh, you know, blues don't show up as well. So you get like a nice green effect and orange, red and purple, but blue, blue ends up kind of being like, this is purple, kind of, you know, filters out the uh, blues a bit through the orange. And so you get more of a reddish color. So you can see that from the side. Um, that said, you can connect a bunch of these up, add rotary encoders, add the Neo key, and um, they're all the same physical size. So it's, sorry, the Neo key and this are the same physical size. It's three inch by 0.8 inches. Um, you can use it as a breadboard, but I kind of like just plugging and playing it with uh, STEM QT or Quick uh, to add uh, quick user um, interface elements. And um, this board comes fully assembled because we kind of, uh, we attach the potentiometer and um, put it through the selective solder machine. So it really is ready to go. Whereas the rotary cool. encoder board um, you know, it's kind of choose your own rotary encoder. Okay, and that's new product.